Hi, my name is Tiffany Dobson and welcome to Stead in the City. Continuing with our backyard garden trend, mm -hmm. uh, give us a tour. Okay. Um, so, like you mentioned, this is all in my backyard. Um, let's see, all of my beds were supposed to have names, but with any garden planning, like this right here was supposed to be my pepper bed, but then this ended up with most of the peppers and so now it's just kind of like all over the place um, but starting with this bed here i have uh, let's see i got a scotch bonnet right here it's finally starting to set some stuff off so that's really exciting um, got my okra in the back my collards some basil and marigold that i need to pull up <laughs> um, here is actually kind of like my pepper bed so I have my bell peppers in here, um, a ton of sweet peppers. And excuse all of the holes, I actually, I just recently pulled some stuff up to get ready for fall planting. So um, got a little tomato plant here because you can never have too many of those. Where do you get a lot of your plants from? I'm um, kind of all over the place. Um, like this tomato plant here, I actually got from the Farmers Association in Little Rock. Um, I think that might be where I got my jalapeno plant from also, okay. but all of these peppers here uh, were the peppers and then the Swiss chard here were all started from seed. The basil and the nasturtiums, those were all started from seed. Um, and most of those seeds actually came from like Walmart and Home Depot. Um, all of my fancy seeds, I didn't get those until recently when I finally realized like there's all these other seed places. <laughs> Um, Where do you start your seeds at? Uh, well, these, being the impatient gardener that I've always kind of been, I put these in the ground in like March. And I was like, it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of fine. Yeah. Um, but actually now I have all of my seeds. I'm starting them in my office. And then I have a greenhouse that I need to put together um, and that I'm going to put all of them in and it's going to go back there. Okay. Um, this Malabar spinach here. Yeah. Um, I actually got from Jess at Roots and Refuge. Oh, cool. Um, and it's just, it's like the happiest plant here. It's so cool. Yeah, I like how it's finding. Did you mm -hmm. help vine that? Nope. Trellis? It has done, it wow. has done that all on its That's own. It's a perfect trellis. Yes, like absolutely perfect. Um, it looks really good when the lights come on. Uh, see, I have some dragon tongue bush beans in the back. Uh, my zucchini that I recently sowed. Uh, who is this? This is my cucamelons. Got a ground cherry in the back. This is where a lot, I pulled a lot of stuff out from over here, so that's why it's so empty. Uh, my zinnia and tomato forest jungle situation going on. Uh, let's see, cayenne peppers, some echinaceas. Um, I see these bottles in here. What do you got going mm -hmm. on there? Oh, this was my DIY uh, wine bottle irrigation system. Um, have you ever heard of like an Oya? No. Um, imagine like a terracotta um, or like a clay pot, basically, that you fill it with water um, and then there's a stopper, there's a hole in the stopper and you um, stick it in the ground. As the um, soil dries out, the terracotta will actually allow the water to release into the soil for, you know, for easy watering pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, those are hard to come by um, and can also be very expensive. And so I had plenty of wine bottles laying around. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for that, I just drilled a hole in either the cork or the twist off, okay. filled it with water and stuck it in the dirt. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I actually have it on my YouTube channel if you want to okay. see the tutorial. Yeah, where is your YouTube channel? Um, Stead in the City. Uh, it's on YouTube. Instagram is Stead in the City. Uh, could you explain the name real quick, where you came up with mm -hmm. that? Uh, well, Stead in the City came from, uh, I can't really call it a homestead because it's a regular old city house um, with a regular city backyard, but that doesn't change what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. It's still very much in the homesteading spirit and um, it's not just the garden, it's trying to be more um, intentional with our waste, trying to be more um, self-sufficient, you know, as best as we possibly can. Um, and then also it's just a play on sex in the city. So, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> 
Um, over here, this was this originally was supposed to be a three sisters bed, but um, squirrels took it over rather quickly. Oh, yes. So now it's just it's a newly started um, cucumber plant, and then I have some beans going on in there. Um, more tomatoes that have seen better days. It's the end of it's getting near the end of the summer season. Yeah, so. these are doing better than a lot of ours. Yeah. It's just hot. Um, some more zinnias. But then actually right here, the second bed, the second seven foot bed, this is my five sisters bed. Oh, cool. um, the three sisters planting method, if you're unfamiliar, um, it is an indigenous planting practice where you basically you have a tall crop. Traditionally, it's corn. And then you have a... Um, cover crop so like squash or something that puts off like big leaves or big vines um, and then you have something that restores and restores nitrogen back into the soil so beans um, this one right here I have green amaranth or Jamaican callaloo or um, it's called baji um, in some um, some recipes it'll be referred to as baji and then I have watermelons and black eyed peas but it operates just the same. Yeah. The callaloo acts as a trellis for the black eyed peas and then the vines from the the vines and the leaves from the watermelon act as a mulch as ground cover. So and then I also have a squash going on back there too. <laughs> you can do it yeah. with sunflowers, you can do it with amaranth, um, yeah, anything that grows tall pretty much. Yeah. Um, actually have you ever had callaloo? No. It is it's like a replacement for spinach. Um, and then I got my black eyed peas going on. These actually just made their wonderful appearance. Oh, nice. And then there's some watermelons down there. What yeah. kind of watermelons are those? Uh, sugar baby. Mm -hmm. And then over here, this is also another three sisters. Um, but for whatever reason, every time I put down corn, the birds find it. This is my compost and it is exactly as it appears. It is four pallets that I may or may not have pulled off the side of the road. I did. Um, and then zip ties. Um, but it works perfectly. You know, this one, it hinges open. Um, turning it is a little bit difficult, but that's mostly just because I don't have a pitchfork. Um, but it gets the job done. I've actually, I've gotten underneath there, pulled out some of the, um, the finished compost and I've used it in the front yard. Let's see over here. This is the left or part of what's left over of a chip dump that I got from First Electric, which is the electric company out here. Uh, my plan for this is to use it for the chickens and then also use it as um, mulch in the garden. Uh, right now I just have like a lot of layers of straw. How did you uh, contact the electric company and get this? Just called them. Just called um, them. It did take a few months for it to get here. Um, so if you're on like a timetable, don't expect, don't expect to call them and then to get it like right away. And then here, I lovingly refer to my backyard flock as Destiny's Chickens. Um, there's five of them, so Destiny's Chickens or DC5. The coop my husband and I built, um, and all of that except for the hardware cloth, um, all of that is reclaimed material. And it actually worked out because uh, there's somebody that lives um, like two blocks away that actually keeps chickens. Mm -hmm. They also have the lot behind them though, so they have way more chickens than I do, mm -hmm. um, but that's where I kind of learned Okay, I can have chickens yeah, in the city. Yeah. We're doing this. <laughs> like, and it's, um, it's so awesome. Yeah. Um, it's super, super awesome. I love these chickens. I would say that's about it. Um, I do have a project in the front. Okay. It's not finished yet, right. um, but that's gonna be a pumpkin patch. I wanted to do some kind of growing in the front yard, but I wasn't quite sure I want, what I wanted to do. Um, and then one day, let's see, what was I doing? May have been at work, you know, should have been working, but it was, thinking about garden things and the idea of pumpkins popped in my mind and I was like okay pumpkins where can I do pumpkins and I was like I can do pumpkins in the front yard um, a pumpkin patch would just be so much fun to have because like imagine if the larger pumpkin patches don't open 
this can be an opportunity for, you know, obviously not the entire city of Jacksonville, but, you know, my, my kids, maybe some of their friends, if the larger pumpkin patches don't open, they can come to our house and pick a pumpkin out of the patch. My plan is it's going to be another kind of form of a three sisters bed. I'm gonna have the pumpkins in here. And then I actually ordered some noodle beans because duh, <laughs> um, mostly Jess's fault. Um, I ordered some noodle beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a few uh, like bean teepees in here, grow the noodle beans. And then I'm also going to have sunflowers because you can't have a pumpkin patch without sunflowers. Um, so if all else fails, it's going to be pretty because if there's two things I know I can grow, it's sunflowers and beans. <laughs> so my biggest like future goal is to get um, the younger generation involved um, and actually not just the younger generation, um, but younger black students, younger black children, um, black and brown kids, getting them involved in, in gardening. Um, showing them that you can garden regardless of the space that you have or the space that you don't have, um, regardless of the constraints that you think you have. If you think it's a monetary situation, there are ways to get around that. Um, there are frugal ways to grow your own food um, or just grow food for your community. Because a lot of this I actually give away. Like, I gave my neighbor a basket of full of peppers and some basil um, and some flowers and like half a dozen eggs. I just gave it to him because I I'm not going to use all of it, um, but then it gives them a chance to experience, you know, farm fresh um, food. My big, big goal is to actually work with UAPB, um, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. They're actually a land grant program, um, which was, um, they're, well, first of all, they're an HBCU, they're a historically black college and university. And then they also have a land grant program um, where students that go into their agricultural program I believe it's their second, in their second year, um, they can get a scholarship from the USDA. Um, it's like basically a full ride scholarship and then almost like a guaranteed job afterwards. Um, and so I would like to work with UAPB to offer scholarships to students that want to go into agriculture or um, agroeconomics um, or, well, and or some form of social justice. Because for me, outside of being self-care and being like a fun activity this is a form of social justice for me um, because if we can teach people how to grow their own food then food deserts won't necessarily they won't be as much of an epidemic as they are um, if you didn't learn anything from the pandemic you should have learned that our food system is laughably broken um, and for me and for other people who live in like a middle class neighborhood or come from a middle class background where they have access to fresh food, okay, we go to the store, our options are limited. For someone who lives in a food desert, they go to the store and the shelves are empty, they might not eat. If they can learn how to grow their own food, then they at least they have that to eat. So that's like my big, big one. Um, increasing visibility of farmer's markets working with farmers markets to get them to accept SNAP benefits. Um, that speaks to like the larger, my larger mission of Stead in the City is that I don't wanna just encourage people to grow their own food. I wanna encourage people to support the overall homesteading lifestyle. If you don't wanna grow food, don't grow food. That's totally fine, but you can shop at farmers markets and you can, own, you can I don't wanna say only, you can primarily shop from local farmers, um, buying in-season foods, putting, um, basically just like putting a kink or like a cog in that machine of, well, we gotta keep tomatoes open all year, so we're going to get out of season, unripe tomatoes and push it onto you as, here you go, this is what you're gonna eat. I've always been involved in some kind of gardening. I'm originally from California. Uh, my parents back home had a garden every summer, so that was what we did. We would just go in the backyard, um, they did in-ground gardening, and we would go, we'd get all the grass up, and we'd lay all the rows, and we'd plant what we needed to plant. This was the first year that I did something big. I can attest that to I got a word and I followed. There's really no other rhyme or reason to it. It was go bigger, so I went bigger. And 
I've gone bigger in so many more ways than I could have imagined. Like, it's not just my garden that's grown. Um, a lot, a lot has grown, and it's really exciting. Oh, well, like the Instagram community yeah. is amazing. <laughs> um, I, a lot of people follow me, and I follow a lot of people, um, local and non-local. What I really like about following non-local people, especially people that are like um, in like Georgia and Louisiana, is I can see what's going on in their zone and kind of prepare for it here because their zone, um, they're a zone before us. So I knew squash bugs were coming because they were dealing with it. So I was like, okay, let me go ahead and get ready. Um, and like just seeing their harvest and seeing their yield, yields got me excited about my harvest and my yields. And then it's also just a great way to share what I'm doing with everyone. Like social media has given us, you know, before our community was just like this house, that house, this house, and maybe the house down the street. Social media has made it so that our community can be on the other side of the world. And then I got to meet Jess. Like. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, speak to that real quick. I mean, I heard, have heard you mention Roots and Refuge and mm -hmm. Jess a couple times during this. Um, when I decided to go big, you know, I researched. I'm an academic, so I research everything. Um, and I don't know how I fell onto her page. Like, it's not that hard. It's, you know, Roots and Refuge is huge. Um, so I, I found my way to their YouTube channel and I was just watching, I was like, oh, this is great. Like, that's where I got the idea for the cattle panel. And then I don't remember when they mentioned that they were in Central Arkansas, but I was like, wait, what? I was like, they're in Central Arkansas. Okay. And then like, I think she actually mentioned Valonia once. And I was like, I know where that's at. Oh my God. <laughs> it was either Valonia or Conway. And I was just like, I know where that's at. I was like, okay, so I was like, I'm definitely going to watch her because this is someone that is growing not only in my zone, but like down the highway. Um, and then, let me see, when we met about a month ago, we actually had the opportunity to meet. Um, I, well, I had asked her if she had any um, Malabar spinach seeds. And she said, no, she didn't have any, but she had some volunteer plants and that I was more than welcome to come and dig them up. So I was just like, so one, I get to come to the farm and then two, I get to take something from it. <laughs> Are you serious? Um, and it was so much fun. Um, just, she is so down to earth. Um, she has been such a blessing to me in so many different ways. Like even way before this, she was such a blessing. Um, and so that's why it makes me really happy that the Malabar spinach is just so happy because this is like a piece of Roots and Refuge that is now at Stead in the City. It's so happy, you know, like I love it. Thank you for allowing us to Thank come you. and take a tour of your garden mm -hmm. and sharing a lot of your knowledge and your passion. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you for braving the rain.